Hello friends, my name is Theo and today in this exciting Mystery Media tutorial, we'll be taking a look at the very basics of getting into Dynamics inside Houdini. So, launching Houdini, we're just going to talk about some basic things, how to get started and what all the nodes actually mean without having to go into shelf tools. Because shelf tools are great, but it's even better to know how things actually work so you can start to build your own stuff and whenever a client asks for something specific that isn't in the shelf, you can sort of start getting to where you're going. So. All right, we've got our project opened up here. So the first thing we'll do is drop down a geometry node. So tab, type in geo, we're off to a great start there. And here we'll just drop down a box. And then just because we're gonna want it later, we're gonna hit tab and drop in a null. So a new L. If you hold down shift and enter, it'll automatically connect. And we'll name this box to dop. Because this is what we're gonna be accessing whenever we take our box to our dynamics network. So now if we play this back, nothing happens. Let's turn on real time and let's set this frame range to about 90. And boy, this is looking real good so far. Well, not really. So since we're gonna be moving around between a couple different nodes, what I'm gonna do here is a really handy tip. And this is hold down control and hit one. And this will set a one quick mark. So as we go up, if I hit one, let's take us back here. If hit U to jump back up. And now we will drop down our DOP node, which stands for Dynamics Operators. So DOP, and hit enter to dive in here. We see our box is ghosted out because it's not in here yet. So in order to get our box into our DOP network, what we'll do is type down RBD for rigid body dynamics and then object. And for pretty much all the simulations here, you're gonna need an object. So if you look here, you can see there's all sorts of object things to choose from. Fluid objects, flip objects, fem solid objects, all sorts of cool stuff. But we're going to take an RBD object, rigid body dynamics object, and we're going to use this to access our cube. So this will take a SOP path. So what we're going to do is we're going to access that null that we made before. So we're going to look for this null, go back, and since we're going to be moving around a lot, I'm going to hit Control 3 to create a quick mark here so we can go 1, 3, and hop between those without having to go up to our object level each time. Great. So now we've got that happening. And we'll go ahead and connect this. And that's not what we want. So we will go ahead and change this to be our correct geometry. We've got geo, box to dot. And there we go. Now we've got our box in our dynamics operator network. And if we play, still nothing happens. Okay. But I mean, we've got our box in our dynamics operator network. And there's no little red flags going up. So we're making progress. The next thing we're going to need is a solver. So there are so two of the standard ones that you'll use for this are the RBD solver and the bullet solver. And I tend to default towards the bullet solver just because I tend to get better results with that. And what a solver does is it applies an operation based on the pr frame before. So when we drop this in here, will anything start to happen yet? No, and that's because we still don't have anything affecting this. So this is technically being simulated right now, which is pretty nice. And if I had a really slow computer, you could see it would need to simulate, but this is a pretty easy simulation. So, you know, we're not getting there yet. So now we're gonna get into the goodness. So what's a good force that we'll probably have in most of our simulations? Maybe like gravity. Let's see if they have a gravity force. Nice, so we've got a gravity force. And now where are we gonna put this? If we look up here, see this needs an object. So we could put it up here but this output is also an object. And the funny thing about this stop network that's a little tricky to get your head around first is it solves up and down. So it'll reach around whatever nodes it needs. So it's not just going top down. So that can be a little confusing at first. So most of the time you'll see gravity put here. And if you see this, now we're getting a dynamic simulation. Look at this, very nice. But if we take this out and we put it up here, you can see it will still work the same. So if we wanted like two different gravities and two different objects, we could do it there and it would still work. But just for the sake of keeping this, like the rest of the tutorials on the internet, we're just gonna put this right down there. Nice. So now, I mean, this is pretty cool, but I mean, it's not quite mom's fridge level yet. You know, we need to make this a little cooler before it gets on the fridge. And that's where the good stuff goes. So we'll have this drop onto a floor and bounce around a little bit. So cool. So we'll hop back up and we'll name this geometry box and we'll prop down another geometry node and we'll name this one floor and there's a really easy shelf tool to do this for you 
called Ground Plane. But like I said, we're making everything from scratch so we can like, get what's going on here. Because whenever I was a beginner, all of the skipping around did not help. So we'll dive into our floor and we'll pop down a grid, which is what Houdini calls a plane. Great. We'll put a transform underneath that. Shift enter to connect automatically. Now we'll middle click and drag on here to get it below our cube a little bit. Excellent. If I ever forget to call out what I'm clicking down in the bottom left corner of the screen is what's going on. Great. So now I've got this and we'll do just like we did before. We'll add a null, shift enter, and we'll call this floor to dop. And we'll assign this to control two. So now we've got our cube in one, our floor in two, and our dot net in three. So it's really easy to skip around to wherever we need to be. Excellent. And now if we play, it falls right through the floor. Oh no. And that's because we haven't brought the floor into our dynamic simulation yet. So, I mean, the obvious thing to do would be to create another RBD object, right? So I can just alt drag this, create another one. And to get both these in here, you can try and do this, but that's not going to work for you. So what we'll do instead is create a merge node. And we can bring these two things together. And we'll point this to our floor. And now if we play through, oh no, our floor is being affected by gravity. We don't want that. So we've learned before, we could move this gravity. So I'll shimmy it out of here and pop it in this. And now, I mean, it kind of works, right? But you see that everything's still being simulated. So even though this plane isn't being affected by gravity, it's being affected by the inertia of the box. So that's not going to work for us. What we need to get the result that we want is to make this grid a static object. So we can do this in the RBD object node by turning off create active object. So this will not be an active object. And that means it won't be affected by our forces. So it'll just be a collider. And there we go. That works pretty well. And to make this a little more interesting, let's go back to one. Let's add a transform to our box. And we'll just rotate it around a little bit. So we get a little more interesting movement going on. Because, you know, the goal for all these is mom's fridge. And now, look at this. That's looking pretty good, I think. But... For more experienced Houdini users, you'll know that this is not the typical way that we do a static object. What we can do instead of doing this whole RBD object thing is we can just type down static object. And now we've got a static object. And the key in I to view might even see there is a static solver in here too. But that's for a different tutorial. We can get this all happening pretty easy in the bullet solver and that'll get you pretty far. So I'll do our same thing as before. We'll go and take this a floor. And this should be basically the same thing as before. Yep, looks great. And this is just, you know, a little easier way of doing the static objects is using the actual static object node. But just so you can understand how rigid body dynamics and that stuff works, all you need is the object. So you can use this also. This is just a little more preferred. So now, I mean, this is the basics. We've got stuff looking pretty good. So we can add more forces, maybe like a wind wind force and drop this in here. See what this does. Yeah, it changes things around a little bit. We can give this a lot more force. Look, that's being blown. That's pretty cool. So that's, that's the gist of this. We're going to do a little bit more just so we can make this all the way mom's fridge worthy. So let's go ahead and delete this force, even though it's cool, you know, whatever. So we're going to get into a little more advanced stuff now. So if you're just starting out, just sort of sit back and absorb this. If you're more intermediate level, then, you know, try and follow along and see if we can make this happen. What we're going to want to do is have this box be shattered and then have a bunch of pieces be down on the floor. So the first thing we need to do is shatter the box. So go up to three. And I'm going to do all this before the transform, just because that's what makes sense to me. I'll type in VOR for a word I'm not going to try and pronounce. I know I should know how to pronounce. Fracture. And you see, it's not liking this yet. We've got our geometry coming in, but we also need some points. So I'll add in a scatter node to generate some points. And we'll take the source as our cube and feed this in here. And now you see we get a nice, a lot of little pieces. Let's make this a little easier. We'll make this 100 points to get 100 pieces. 
And that looks pretty good. Now if we play this through, we don't really get what we want yet. So what we're going to want to do is, there's a couple different ways to do this. I'm only going to show you one way, which is sort of generally the preferred way whenever working with lots of pieces of stuff. And that is to pack this geometry. So what pack geometry is, is it basically instead of saying that there are, you know, all of these different pieces with each a bunch of different edges and vertices and stuff, it just takes that and treats it as one point. So it's much easier to simulate, much lighter weight. That's sort of an oversimplification, but it works for this. So basically, we're having to have the simulation think about less stuff. So in order to pack these, there's the pack node and the assemble node, and they both do basically the same thing. The assemble just makes it a little bit easier. So we're not going to the intricacies of these. The assemble is basically a pack node and one other node, I'm pretty sure. So we got this in here, and after we play this through, still nothing. I mean, we get a box that's bumping around with some cool lines on it, but that's not what we want. So we also need to click Create Pack Geometry, of course. Go. Now, still not doing what we want. So let's go back to our DOP network. And now, instead of an RBD object, maybe we need to do something that talks about the fact that this isn't just one object. This is packed objects. So type in packed. Now look, RBD packed object. Very cool. So let's go ahead and get rid of this guy and bring this one in. And now we'll look for our SOP path. So we've got that same box to DOP node. And playing through. Look at that. Now, I mean, that can go on mom's fridge. Let's make it explode a little more. Just play around some so we can go to our physical and bring our rotational stiffness up just so they don't rotate around as much. We'll bring our bounce up and we'll bring our friction up. Now, bring our bounce up even more. Even more. Whoo, too much. One point two. There we go. That's fun and explodey. Yeah. So now we've got that. Look at this. Put some lights behind this. And this is this is ready for the fridge, I think. So there we go. I hope you enjoyed this little tutorial. Hopefully it made sense. So if you like this video, be sure to give it a like. If you didn't, give it a dislike. No matter what, leave your feelings down in the comments below. Let me know any other features that you want me to tackle because this is just such a huge program. There are still lots of pieces of this that I haven't even clicked on yet. So I'm always excited to hear what people have to do. If you make something with this, post it to Instagram and tag me in it because I love seeing what people make on this. I just think it's so cool how many people that are so much smarter than me are out there making really cool stuff. Or also just share other cool stuff on Instagram or the Facebook page. Links for socials are down in the description below. Uh, if you want to support the channel, go over to mesomedia.com slash products. The lens junk and light leak packs are great for graphics. So I use those for title openings all the time. Openings, geez, I'm revealing my southernness. I use them for title openings all the time. Um, they're great for just stuff you need fast, easy, and to look good. So they're worth picking up. And if you don't want them, but you know, you want to make you feel good, that works too. Just, you know, deposit some money in my bank account, buy me lunch. So Anyway, once again, I've been Theo with Mr. Media. I hope you have a great day, and I will see you next time. Bye.